Hello everybody, this is Hammer Striker here. You've probably seen our first look on this P80, which is the Glock P80. It's manufactured 100% by Glock. And it is a modern recreation or a retro version of what was the original Glock 17 Gen 1, the polymer pistol that kind of started the polymer revolution. I'll show you that it's... So in the first look, we hadn't taken it to the range or done anything else with it, so I'm going to follow up and I'm going to do the review on it. But I'm going to kind of focus on what makes this different than I've got a Gen 4 Glock 17 and also talk about some of the things that are not exactly the same as what the original Glock 17 was. It's close, but there's a few things that are different and there's probably a good reason. Before we do that, just kind of review a couple of the things that come with it. It comes with this little sleeve and inside the sleeve, if I can get it to come out, is a certificate of, of authenticity. And this is not a, and it's signed by Gaston Glock. This is not a Polymer 80 or one of the aftermarket companies doing a Glock retro. This is actually Glock doing it right from the factory. Comes with this kind of a cool box. And before you panic, no, Glocks aren't coming in cardboard boxes from now on. Inside the cardboard box is a food storage container. No, it's actually the original, what they everybody started to call the Tupperware container from Glock. And the Glock would fit in here, the pistol would sit here and you could store two magazines here and one in the gun and in the very very earliest version of the Tupperware container there was actually a little clips to hold 17 rounds the ATF made them take that out for import restrictions but this is the way a Glock if you'd bought one in the early 80s was delivered to you in this Tupperware container and of course you could close it and seal it so it didn't go bad so inside this kind of it's, the box also has a magnetic closure so this box really is a decorative thing. They're not going to start shipping them in cardboard boxes after that. So now we're back to the gun itself. And I think I showed clear, but we'll do that again just to play it safe. One of the differences, the original Glock 17 was 17 rounds, just like the Glock 17 today. But it comes with Gen 4 mags. So it's got the double notches. And when we did have this at the range, we tried it with a Glock 19X magazine and we tried it with a Gen 5 magazine and it worked flawlessly. So it'll work with any of the modern magazines. The magazine catch is a small one as comparison to, here's a Gen 4, you'll see how large the Gen 4 magazine release is. The Gen 4 magazine release is also reversible. This one, upon first glance looking at it, it might look like it's reversible, it's actually not. And then when I get it apart and show you in the frame, there's not even, not only is there not room here, for it to protrude out to be reversed, but the inset for the spring doesn't even allow for it. It has the pebble texture, and this was original. The original Gen 1 had this pebble texture as well, and it goes all the way around. And it is a little bit slippery. It doesn't have a whole lot of grip. And one of the things that tended to happen with these is they'd score it out of somebody's hands when they went to grab it or fire it, especially when they were trying to pull it in a hurry. I didn't experience any problems with that. It stayed right in my hand the entire time and worked quite well. Kind of give you a full view of it all the way around. And while I'm turning it, I'm going to turn it this way. And you can see on the trigger guard, it has the pebble texture. That's the original texture. The modern ones have kind of a serration. They have the little serrations on it. I got, here's a Gen 4. Bring that into view. You'll see the serrations on the Gen 4. And, of course, you'll see the, the pyramids and serrations. The Gen 4 also has finger grooves, but some of the other vari variants didn't have finger grooves, but they went more towards this texture. It's a little bit grippier. It does have a single pin, just like the original Gen 1s. The modern ones have two pins. There's another pin right up here that gives a little bit more rigidity. And, of course, they all have a single pin back here at the fire control group. But you'll notice that the replaceable back straps are absent. The Gen 1 did not have replaceable back straps. Those didn't actually appear till Gen 4. Other than that, oh, and no rail. So it doesn't have a Picatinny rail. Of course, it has no front serrations. That's a fairly new thing. With the uh, Gen 4 Summer Special started the front serrations, and then Gen 5s, the very first Gen 5s didn't even have it, but they quickly changed that. And it does have the hated cutout. But that's the way the Gen 1 was, this little cutout. And they reintroduced that with the Gen 5s and the 19X, and it was kind of universally hated. So if you get a very current Gen 5, one of the latest ones, that's gone. They kind of get rid of that. That wasn't well liked. 
but they put it on this gun and I kind of kind of go along with it being there because that's the way the Gen 1 was and that's what this is trying to be as close as possible to. Of course it did have the split trigger. The trigger is actually kind of smooth with a little bit of a wall and it breaks at the end. And when I pop it open, you'll see the fire control groups are very similar on them. There's minimal differences. Dimensionally, it's the same. So it's about 7.95 to 8 inches long front to back. And it's about 5.47 tall, top to bottom. I'm going from the top of the slide to the base. And the slide is 1.26 inches. At, I'm sorry, the slide is 1 inch. The overall dimension, when you figure the controls, goes out to 1.26 inches. So it is a faithful reproduction of the dimensions, and the Glock 17 has basically re retained those same dimensions. One other thing that you'll notice externally is the extractor is flat. It doesn't have the little hump on it to act as a loaded chamber indicator, like you have on a Gen 4. You see that little hump, so when it's chambered, that'll stick out. If you run your finger across it, you'll feel it. The original Gen 1 didn't have that, so they kept that. Now they did do keep some of the improvements that were made over the years. For example, on the extractor, in the inside of it, there's a little cutout for debris collection on the modern guns. The Gen 1 didn't have that, it was flat internally, but this one has the debris collection slot, so if debris won't hang up the extractor. So there are some changes they've made that deviate from the original Gen 1 that were made to improve reliability or safety. Some of the very, very first Gen 1s, the slide rails were too short. And as a result, they had a tendency to actually accidentally discharge, which a modern Glock won't do. I mean, they drop these things out of helicopters and they don't go off. But some of the very early ones had a problem where they would go off during being chambered. And one of them actually went full auto and did a three-round burst. So there's a few changes that were made over the very initial part of the Gen 1 that improved that durability and safety that they retained in this. And I'll accept that. I mean, if you have an original Gen 1, you probably either thought about or had previously installed what was called the upgrade kit that mitigated some of those issues. So from a safety perspective, a few of those modern changes were retained. Let's go ahead and get this one apart. And I'm also going to take apart that Gen 4 so that I can show you some of the differences or actually in some cases the similarities. And we'll start with the frame. So I'm going to keep the Gen 4 frame in my left hand. And I'll keep the P80 frame in my right hand. And at any point, if you see you know, the sides of it, it'll kind of help you determine which one's which if there's a little bit of confusion. If you look at them today, especially from this angle, they look to be identical. There's a couple nuances you may pick up on when you glance at it, such as on the Gen 4, you've got kind of a squarish ejector and it's got kind of a little twist to it and on the P80 you've got a pointy extract or ejector and it's got more just of a curvature instead of a twist just a minor nuance the trigger bars are also a hair different you'll see that the profiles are quite similar but the Gen 4 which is now on the bottom in this picture has a bump on it which is characteristic of the Gen 4 so it's an alignment bump that doesn't exist on the P80, but it does retain that rounded pattern as opposed to the squarish pattern that was on the very first original Glock 17 Gen 1s. The other thing is the, fl the frame rails are pretty much identical in the modern one. The original Glock 17, they were shorter and that caused some issues as well as the locking block was a little different. The fire control group is basically the same. If you look at it, you won't see any differences or maybe a nuancey difference. There's a couple extra little uh, pinpoint depressions on the sear and there's a single pin on the sear here but without actually pulling the fire control group completely apart to determine if there's any other differences they're quite similar so frames internally are very very similar with of course the most noticeable difference being the presence of the rail on the gen 4s and the absence of the rail on the original gen 1 or p80 which this one is now if we go to the slides, first thing you're going to pick up on is the recoil spring. It's a single wafer recoil spring on the P80 and I've got the Gen 4 in my left hand and the dual recoil spring on the Gen 4. Now one difference from an actual Gen 1 is this is a captive recoil spring. So it's a wafer style spring but on the original Gen 1 it wasn't captive. You could slide the guide rod out. 
and a lot of guns still use the non-captive springs today, but they did use a captive spring on this, which is similar to the Gen 2s and some of the 3s. And of course the Gen 4 has the captive dual recoil spring you've come, become used to. The barrels are almost indistinguishable. If I hold them side by side, I've got the Gen 4 barrel in my left hand, even the finish is the same. So the barrels are pretty much the same thing. Now the very, very first Gen 1s came with what was called the pencil barrel. They were thin, they didn't have this much, of, this thick of a wall. So the barrel was actually quite thin and, and they had noticeable pencil-like look sticking out of the barrel block and chamber. They fairly quickly changed that in the early Gen 1s. So there were some Gen 1s that came out with this style barrel. The pencil ones, if you get one, they're actually kind of desirable. But when I put them up side by side, the profiles are almost the same. And the chamber areas are also the same. And I'm trying to keep the Gen 4 in my left hand, but I'll end up checking the serial numbers when I put them back together because I think they're that close that visibly you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. And if I light up the barrels, you'll see that they are polygonal rifling, just like the Glocks have always been. So now it doesn't want to focus. There it goes. You see the polygonal rifling. I'll do it to the other one. And you can see it there. So the barrels, not much of a difference between the P80 and the current. And the later Gen 1s even used that similar barrel. I'm going to end up just setting these beside because I don't know if I've gotten them mixed up or not. And go to the frames. And the P80, like the Gen 4s, doesn't have the marksman barrel. And I said I was going to go to the frame. I was actually the slides. So if I hold the slides side by side, the Gen 4 is in my left hand and the P80 is in my right, they look pretty much identical internally. Now, a few things are different on this P80 than an original Gen 1. It has the upgraded firing pin. It's a little bit more robust. So it's basically the same firing pin as a modern Glock. And it has the upgraded striker or safety plunger, just like a modern Glock. It's a little bit more robust, and it's got the beveled edges to make it easier for the, the trigger bar to ride up on. They're both the same. But it does not have the rectangular style, the little rectangular ramp style that has become popular in the Gen 5s. So those are a few of the manufacturing improvements that were made to make the original one a little bit more reliable and a little bit more safe that they retain going forward onto this one. And of course the sights are the same design where it's a screw at the front and dovetail at the back. There are polymer sights, just like Glocks have pretty much always been other than if you get the night sights, usually the night sights are steel. And they've had a couple variants that have come out over time with steel UDOT sights. So really, it's kind of interesting to see how little Glock actually changed. Some of these things that I described to you are nuances little you know, engineering details to make it more safe or more reliable, but nothing of significant import. So it's probably time at this point to put it back together. So I'm going to put the P80 down on the right, and I'm going to take a look at the serial numbers so that I get the right barrel for the right gun. Drop the barrels in. I actually think they would be interchangeable, but I want to put them back together the way they belong. Drop the recoil spring in. Because this recoil spring is captive, it's a little, the wafer springs can be a little bit twitchier to line up, but overall it's easy to put back together. So I've got the Gen 4 frame. I'm sure this question is on everybody's mind. Gen 4, P80. P80. Gen 4 slide. Make sure I've got the recoil spring properly seated. Well, that's interesting. So the P80 slide will go on the Gen 4 frame, but it won't go the other way around, and I think that's the nuance of the drop safety. So they're not fully interchangeable. So let's put them back together the way they belong. I would probably not plan on creating a Franken gun. 
So I did go back after I ended the video. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't doing it wrong to understand why the slides weren't reverse interchangeable in both directions. And I figured out there's a few differences. The noticeable difference is, let's see if I can get it where you can see it, this well, I've got the P80 here on this side. So my hand's on the P80 that you can see. This well right here is narrower. So if I take the P80's recoil spring, it will dry up into that. And of course, because this one is wider, it'll fit. If I take the Gen 4 recoil spring, it'll slide into the Gen 4 frame, of course, but it hits. So the recoil spring's foot is one of the big differences. The other difference is on the slides, I'll turn them facing the right way, you'll see that the hoop for the recoil spring is much wider on the Gen 4 than it is on the original P80, and this would have been the original Glock 17 Gen 1. And the frames, which this didn't come into play in this particular situation because it hit on the recoil spring first, but you'll see that even the dust covers on the frames are a different width to account for that. So I wasn't doing it wrong. They are not interchangeable. I have a funny feeling the P80 would probably actually function on the Glock 17 or I'm sorry, on the Gen 4, but you might have problems with that recoil spring over time. So even though it did actually fit and I was able to cycle it and pull the trigger, I don't think it will work reliably over time. So franking guns is definitely not a thing you're gonna do with this particular setup. So if you've had the itch for a Gen 1, mainly for the nostalgia of it, this might scratch that itch. It's not exactly the same as a Gen 1, but right now, it's actually kind of hard to find a Gen 1 that is, that is original factory that isn't cost, going to cost you a lot of money. I've seen them where they've been modified. People have changed out the sights. People have stippled them. They've done all sorts of things. So at that point, it's not a Gen 1 anymore. It's just a Glock. It's just been like any other hacked up Glock. This might give you that ability to see what it was like back in the 80s, but with some of the modern safety features, the modern reliability, and the modern design. But beyond that, oh, the MSRP, by the way, is about $100 more than a Gen 4 Glock. Now, that's MSRP. I would expect right now you'll probably pay significantly more than that because people that have got them, they're only making, the initial run at least is between five and 10000 depending on what store you hear. Whether or not they're going to make more, I don't know. And it's Ellipses exclusive. There's still only one dealer that's got them. But if you, even if they made 10000 in the first run, that's not a lot of guns to spread across the entire United States, everybody wanting one. So you probably will end up paying more for it in the beginning. This might be one to wait. It'll settle down. The price will come down. But if they decide that they're only going to make 10000 and that's the end of that, might be missed opportunity. Unlike some of the other guns like the Colt Cobra and the Python that were very high priced in the beginning, but then the supply caught up and... They're going to make them for the foreseeable future. I don't know what the future holds for the P80 as far as how many they really plan to make. But beyond that, if you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, click that bell to be notified if you do. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, Instagram. We're kind of all over the place. Thank you.